Alrighty. Today is September 25th, and this is the Falcon Core Devs meeting. Um, agenda for today. Um, wanted to give everyone a heads up that at least as of um, our next, next meeting, um, we should have the folks from IPFS Force um, with us. Current timing is a pretty it's pretty terrible in, in China. I think it's like 1 a.m. on a Saturday or something. So we're probably gonna have to reschedule these. Um, they are taking maintainership of Go Filecoin and planning to rename it. Ooh, the, wool, the puppy is so cute. Um, and so the, they will be joining us into the future to um, talk about that, their implementation and um, participate in, in these calls um, from that perspective. So a um, bit of a heads up, would love to spend like maybe two minutes at the very end um, of of this session, just like helping make sure that we can find a slot that'll that'll work for all groups. It's a little bit tricky to coordinate across this many time zones, but we'll we'll figure it out. Uh, so that was first on the agenda. Second is just status updates from various various of us. Anyone want to start? Sure, we can start. Um... Go for it. That'll be easy. Thanks, Austin. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's pretty similar to the status updates that we gave last week. Like, our main goals haven't really changed. We're just kind of making progress towards them. Um, number one goal is uh, working towards syncing and interop. And like, our secondary goal is getting to a full node. Um, in terms of working towards syncing and interop, the specific things that we've done since the last call um, is finishing up the minor after changes. Um, we're hoping that they will be in today, actually. Um, so as of um, the minor after landing, we'll be up to date with 0 0.9.3. Um, and otherwise, other, other changes that we're matching are changes in the message pool. Um, what still has to be done for the message pool is republishing and revert logic for messages and adding message selection logic. So this will be like crucial, obviously, for staying in sync. Um, and then we are also updating the conformance tests. Um, whatever changes have or new tests have been updated, and as soon as the block sequence tests are in, we'll integrate them. Um, we're also doing a pass through of the state manager and chain store to catch any changes that have happened since we we implemented it. Things like the fork logic. Um, and a few other smaller things that we've done. I mean, Austin, you want to speak to the AMP issue that, that you were working on this week? Um, yeah, so I was just making sure like the, that everything kind of interrupts. Like by, I mean, the primary goal was to uh, test the block store reads and writes for the AMPs and then move on to the AMP and do the same, just because obviously gas, uh, gas usage is based on that. So um, just making sure that all uh, matches up and then also um, testing like just to verify all like the CID roots are equal. I mean, I was already tested before, but kind of just like expanding on that a bit. Um, and then also just ensuring that our functionality matches. Um, there was the bug in the AMT um, that we are currently matching because we're not sure whether or not that's going to be pruned out before the mainnet. Um, so I think, maybe, well, I guess we'll get an update later about what the status of that is, if it ever, if it is getting pruned out and, and kind of um, not being added in for the mainnet, but yeah, just kind of working on that and just um, kind of refactoring the AMP a bit just to kind of handle errors a little bit better just because of how um, out of gas errors kind of happen within the VM. It's a little bit finicky when using these uh, data structures, but yeah, that's that's about, about it. That's about it for the, uh, the AMP stuff. And then, yeah, and I guess like kind of that summarizes most of what we've been doing towards the syncing and interop. Uh, goal and then otherwise we're also working towards a full node. Um, so the integration of the storage miner should land today and uh, integrating storage and retrieval markets we're probably looking at a couple of weeks at least just because we're finishing up the pay channel changes. After that um, we have to add the RPC for the pay channel and then we can try out the go fill markets interface and hopefully it'll just work once we have those uh, changes in. And then the other exciting thing is next week, we will finally be in a position to run our local DevNet. Um, so like with the miner after changes and the storage miner, which will allow us to produce blocks, we can actually run a local network of forest nodes. So the plan is to run that and see what issues come up. And 
um, fix them as they as they arise. That's but, awesome. Great yeah. milestone. Thank you. That's it for us. Anyone have any questions for Austin, Amar, Eric? No? Cool. All right, Max, you want to go next? Uh, yep, yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, so for us, for, for us uh, our goals are pretty much the same. So we want to establish a network, uh, well, a DevNet, which uh, will be able to work by itself with uh, Fuhon nodes as well as with Lotus nodes. Uh, but currently we are focusing more on uh, wrapping up uh, the work with Miner. Uh, we are doing it quite actively the past few days. Uh, so, uh, as of now, we have found a couple of, well, not inconsistencies, but uh, fixes that should be done to the sealing process on our side. Uh, otherwise, uh, all the other parts seems to be working uh, fine, but uh, as, well, as, finish, uh, as sealing will be fi fixed, we'll see uh, maybe something else will come up. Um, for the node, yep, uh, we have uh, on the last update I've mentioned that we are blocked on transfer level because of uh, TLS not working properly. Uh, it has been fixed, so now we have a TLS. Uh, noise is still uh, didn't ship, but uh, as, as we had the TLS, we have started uh, proper uh, connection, c connecting properly to the nodes of Lotus and Fuhon, uh, uh, and we faced a different issue with gossip sub uh, now we're also fixing it it, uh, it doesn't seem to be a really big one uh, but still needs some efforts uh, to be fixed uh, so yes uh, for now uh, our main goal is to uh, wrap up with a uh, minor uh, as it's not really dependent on uh, um, on the transport, uh, because we can use Lotus nodes and our own miner uh, in order to test it. Uh, afterwards, we'll, uh, yep, uh, we, we also have our conformance tests right on our address, uh, and we need to start with it really soon just because the current, our, our current uh, cross implementation testing doesn't seem to be really flexible and fast. Uh, we need to some unusual steps in order to make our work, our foods uh, work and with conformance test it will be much easier for us to test uh, to test interoperability so we will we are going to start uh, that next week that's awesome um I agree that both you guys are are leaning into those conformance tests. We have Raul here. Raul, I don't know if you have any updates on on kind of where things are, the things that folks who are investing in uh, test vectors can take advantage of. Yeah, totally. So uh, we have been running a bunch of analytics on chain to identify the latest messages that we could extract from chain using our extraction uh, tooling. Um, that would create a really good coverage uh, for, for folks. So basically what we've done is we've identified for each uh, recipient uh, actor type, each method number and each exit code, we are extracting 10 messages uh, from chain, the latest 10 messages. Uh, and this is gonna give us a lot of uh, coverage with regards to like the business logic as well of business logic of uh, spec actors. Um, which will then, you know, uh, be useful to implementers as well. So that is one thing that we're focusing on. Um, we are creating this two-tiered um, uh, corpus that uh, Austin already, you know, reviewed the design issue for, and a few others have, have chimed in as well. Uh, so we'll create two corpuses. We'll create a coarse grain corpus and a fine grain corpus, um, and and that will kind of like be resilient enough so that if there are changes in logic that uh, change the way that state is accessed, uh, we would be able to re regenerate the fine grain vectors from the coarse grain vectors. So coarse grain corpus is basically gonna be a fallback for us. Uh, then we are also looking into, and those were probably land. So we're dealing with like a bunch of uh, things in 
to make the tooling efficient to extract the test vectors. But hopefully, this will the, the there's around 187 vectors that I think will land as a result of of this um, of this uh, of this effort. Uh, probably will land sometime next week. Uh, then we're doing a bunch of um, we're creating a bunch of tooling and doing a bunch of changes. These might uh, translate into minor schema changes uh, to support multiple network versions. So uh, you have already like all folks in this call will probably have seen that Lotus and Spec Actors have made a bunch of changes to support uh, upgrading uh, of Spec log uh, Spec Actors logic and Ham logic and like ADT logic and like a bunch of things in different places. So. Uh, this translates into something that's called network version. And basically, we want to create tooling that will allow us to run the corpus, the entire corpus, against an arbitrary version of the network version to see if the failures that we find are the ones that we expect to find. So if we know that uh, certain uh, vectors, so certain actors have changed in logic, then we know that that should invalidate certain vectors. And we should be like the, the failures that we find should be constrained to, you know, the changes that we think we have made. And also uh, we should be having tooling to very easily regenerate the test vectors against the test vectors that have failed against uh, the, a new network version or a new set of, of changes. So this kind of like creates uh, tooling to validate uh, changes as, as they happen. And also uh, we want to be able to basically for each vector, express the network versions to which it, it applies. So as we do this, and there are multiple network versions that we test the corpus against, uh, we should be able to enhance and record for each vector, whether that vector remains valid for that network version or it doesn't, right? So this will allow uh, implementations to, based on the network versions that they support, to feed the relevant uh, vectors and not feed the ones that we know are gonna fail because they do not apply for a particular network version. So that's another thing. And then uh, block sequence vectors, we have made progress this week, but a few things jump the queue. So really not enough relevant progress that I can uh, communicate here, but we have made a few, we have landed a few changes in Lotus that allow us to isolate the, the sync line, the, the sync, uh, the sinker itself to uh, be able to uh, just isolate it and not have it communicate over the network or not having to let, not having to manage the worker threads of the sync uh, to so that we can isolate that component and just apply the, the vectors there. So still not relevant uh, progress that I can communicate, but hopefully um, if things are pretty quiet next week, uh, we will be able to uh, to make some some relevant progress there. I'm going to get back to you. Awesome. That's what I said. No, thank you. Super thorough. Love it. Um, any any questions for Raul on any of that? Uh, I just have one uh, quick question. Um, as far as the version being used to generate the vectors, you said you're going to test against all the different versions, all the different network versions, but is there going to be a default that you're going to use to generate all of them? Because I noticed before they were generated using like inconsistent versioning and I was just wondering if there's like going to be a version that's going to be targeted or anything, if you have any information to give about that. Yeah, so um, so basically that what I, what I think is going to happen here is that we will probably test again. So there's like se several, several lines of versioning. There is the spec actors versioning uh, itself in terms of, you know, the commit log and in terms of actual versions that are tagged in that repo. And then there is the network version, right? So network version usually communicates consensus breaking changes. Uh, spec actor versions um, do not in it by themselves, if they are not correlated with a network version uh, change should not be, should not um, imply a, uh, a consensus breaking change, which means that it shouldn't affect the test vector. So the test vector itself, if like, you know, a commit on spec actors or a version of spec actors is just improving the performance of certain things or fixing a bug in a way that it doesn't cause a consensus breaking change, then it shouldn't, unless we capture that bug in a test vector, uh, which could happen as well, which the moment that we launch mainnet, if it's captured in a test vector and that changes is consensus breaking, right? Because if the state 
changes as a result of a bug being fixed, then it is a consensus breaking change. So these things will become like really, a, re, like really, you know, uh, strident in a way that, you know, when there is something that breaks the network that leads to a, a change in state, it's gonna, it's gonna percolate back up. So at this point, I don't think upgrading spec actors without upgrading a network version should pull in any any changes uh, on test vectors themselves. I don't know if that answers the question. It's like maybe a bit of a of a trip, uh, but there's like a lot of factors to consider here, um, and we can take this offline if you if you have more questions around that. No, that's all good. There's no more questions. I was just more kind of. Uh seeing if you were going to target like the 093 or like the 098 like past those because there were some breaking changes before like version zero i guess of like the network upgrade but i assume you're just going to target the most recent for to generate all the vectors yeah 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 and if they happen to break test vectors then that is a problem they shouldn't like <laughs> that shouldn't happen unless there's a network version uh correlated with that change Well, cool. I realized in jumping to Raul so quickly because it seemed relevant that uh, Maxim, we didn't create time for any questions uh, to you from other people. Um, anyone, anyone have any questions for uh, the Fuhan team? Or anything else you wanted to add? We now have a, a Lotus representative. Thanks, Viso, for showing up. Hey, guys. Uh, Hello. Nothing from my side, actually. Cool. Then maybe we uh, we hop over to Lotus and we let Visa give us a quick update. I think the, the rest of the team got caught in a scheduling. Um, they're working on another uh, big test. So, alas. Yeah. yeah. Um, just, uh, it just happened to give her a little bit of free time because I scheduled social activities for tonight for a very big change for me. <laughs> so anyway, so what's happening is that we are uh, preparing for the upgrade. So step one is to basically merge in all the code that's necessary for the upgrade and then you know, like define the epoch for the upgrade is gonna happen. So we're gonna be testing the code without doing the upgrade yet. And then we're gonna test the actual upgrade on a butterfly network before we trigger it on the real network. And that's the major thing that's happening. So the other interesting things that are happening is that we're starting working Lotus Light in conjunction with the gateway. So we can have lightweight Lotus nodes that work by using a remote node uh, gateway. And basically these nodes should be able to run on phones and stuff like that. And I think that's the gist of it. These are the important things. Yeah, I think a quick timeline on the 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 big upgradeability upgrade that Raul was also um, mentioning. We did a, a number of refactors within Lotus to support that um, spec actors network version logic, um, and we've uh, China has a big holiday coming up, and we know a, a good there's a good percent of the minor community in China, and so we're making sure that no uh or we're trying to help ensure that no mandatory upgrades happen during that period because it would be really disruptive for folks who are generally out on vacation and so we've decided to to take that um the upgrade that Fizo was mentioning um the spec actors upgrade and push it to after that holiday so as not to you know work the network while people are out and have a hard time fixing it um and so it, we have more time for testing which is good because it's complicated and a lot of things have changed and so uh, uh, we released uh, 0.7.2 which has the refactor without the upgrade and uh, the upgrade itself is getting a lot of testing um, thanks to Raul and thanks to uh, the rest of the Lotus team. Um, I don't know if anyone had any questions about Lotus Lite but it does sound very exciting. Um, any any other things for, for Visa? Is there like, um, is there anywhere we can check out this Lotus Light thing? Sounds pretty interesting. Well, the only thing that exists is an issue right now. We're just starting work. So, I mean, why in Magic are driving, you know, can want to be working on the gateway and Dirk is going to be working on the, the light client, but uh, we expect to start having progress in the next week. So the issue is, I think, 35, 32 or something. Yes, it's 35, 32. It's very, very uh, brief. 
but uh, the basic idea is that to have a node that has uh, no chain store, basically does no chain operations, it doesn't have to sync or anything. And it's basically a client node that basically just has a wallet and it can do mess it can send messages and do chain operations by utilizing a remote node which is going to be a gateway and it can also do deals directly with uh with miners that's uh, the basic idea so by removing the requirement of having a data store and having to sync your chain and everything but just uh, removing all these heavyweight components and as i said we hopefully want to be able to run it on the phone Awesome. Any other Lotus questions? Cool. Then maybe we hop over to Yamis for um, all the spec improvements. Um, we can push the uh, um, the FIP stuff a little bit later. Yeah. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, so, quick update from the field spec side. Uh, I don't know what was the last time you, you visited the uh, spec site, but it got an upgrade. So if you head over to spec.filecoin.io, uh, you're going to see a new uh, nice and click design uh, and the, um, the process of getting content updated into the uh, spec site has been done, uh, ha has been uh, improved a lot. So there is great user experience, things don't break. Uh, you have to just write a simple markdown language. Uh, there is um, uh, support for math. Um, there is a kind of single touch editing in the sense that you can change um, the hierarchy of the document, add new files, and the table of contents gets automatically updated. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice user experience, which you can, uh, it's very easy to set up. So there is a readme file there that you can see how to install basically um, NPM uh, locally so that you can run a local site and see if something breaks by the changes you do. You get to know it before you push changes and the CI tells you that this is not good. Um, so very simple process. We've integrated kind of uh, health monitoring tools. So there is a dashboard you're going to see. Um, this is tracking the status of the spec sections. So if you if you want to go over and read about the protocol, just head over to the dashboard first to see if it's in a good state or if it's an old outdated version. Uh, you understand that you know updates happen all the time. It's like uh, kind of um, shooting to a moving target. So we we keep updating it. Uh, you'll see that you know there is the spec status and there is the theory audit for those parts of the protocol that have been audited. You're going to find a link to the uh, to the report of that. Uh, there is a similar implementation. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Molly. Um, there is a similar dashboard for the implementations where uh, there is the CI coverage there, the, whether CI tests are passing, test coverage, uh, and also security audit. It's this implementation status. Um, there is a progress bar which says overall at which stage we are, which is right about 70% of stuff that are really good to uh, look at, up to date, and most. Um, uh, this is this kind of uh, a summary of it. Uh, we welcome lots of PRs to data content. So if you've worked on something and you want to uh, add some more detail or correct something, just uh, file a PR there. We have still some ongoing work. So we're building a kind of API proxy to pull data from remote sources. So for example, um, the tests that the friendly ONI team has been, uh, Raul has been talking about, we want to pull from that repository and put them in as conformance tests, you know, uh, near the dashboard in their respective. Uh oh, we lost Yanis. Probably was going to say respective implementation. Something along those lines.
I well, hope everyone gets a, a quick chance to take a look at this. Um, it's made huge progress and now every everything does um, you know much more clearly indicate on each section what what state it's in and whether or not it, this is dependable, accurate information, which is definitely better than where it was a couple of months ago. Um, thanks to sorry, I, I got dropped dropped. I don't know after which point you had. Uh... Uh, you were talking about only conformance tests per implementation. All right, yes, and then I would just say that uh, there's going to be an integration with the, uh, the FIP process. Uh, so it's going, the, the drafts and the integrated are, uh, FIP, FIPs are going to be showing there so that it's kind of a time machine and you can travel back and forth uh, to the spec and see the improvements. And yeah, that's all. Uh, please let us know your opinion, features you want, update the uh, content. Yeah, all welcome. Any questions for Yannis? Cool. I feel like it's a it's a decent segue into um, just talking about like auditing in general. As you can see, there's uh, a lot of things that already have audits or have work in progress audits. Um, and then from a code perspective, a, a chunk of the implementations have um, have gotten or are getting security audited from a from a code perspective. Um, but as something, something that has come up in a couple of, of chats with you guys is um, talking about what, what things to audit, what things have already been audited and, and audit strategy, especially for, a, you know, constantly evolving protocol and code base. Um, and so at least, oh, I guess I can stop sharing this. Um, at least on the, the Lotus side, um, we've definitely, we, we started first by auditing the various components. And so for example, um, we, we did a very thorough audit on Gossip Sub when Gossip Sub um, went to v1.1, which I'm sure Yanis could also talk to us about. Um, he was involved in that, um, but that's that's something that I know that the Forest team is also working on. There's plans to have the um, Rust Gossip Sub uh, audited, um, and which is awesome. Probably something that should also be on the docket maxim for for the C++. Um, Gossip sub implementation to make sure that that gets um, a corresponding security audit, um, and then from a, a kind of code base perspective, we definitely we audited Lip2P, and then we've been re-auditing Lotus on like a every couple of weeks basis uh, with new audit firms, um, just since the, the code and implementation keeps keeps evolving. Um, Want to make sure that we kind of have. Uh, layered uh, tests that people can um, can go back to and make sure that we fix all of those bugs. And we separately audited um, the spec actors repo. So um, separating out there the, the actor side and the, um, the Lotus side helped us do those two audits in parallel. Um, and we, had, we did like a, a more embedded chunk of work on the actor side. Um, and so, that was that's my quick high level update on kind of where the the actors um, like audit status is. But I'm curious if if anyone else has any any questions when it comes to going through the process of kind of scheduling and auditing um, other parts of the implementations. Cool. Well, then uh, audit away, um, kind of to each group to figure out like good timings for, for them, depending on your implementation. Um, but let us know if you need any kind of nudges or introductions or anything like that. Awesome. Okay, I think the last thing on our agenda for today was to talk quickly about um, the most recent FIP, which is always fun. Um, so the, we talked about the FIP process last time, um, which, um, happens, happens here and is generally our way of improving, um, the protocol. We landed, um, FIP number two, um, I think yesterday, 
yeah, yesterday, um, which is aimed at um, minimizing the fees for window posts um, where possible. Um, one of the things that we noticed from like the live network um, throughout Space Race and um, it, it is this that miners sometimes through no fault of their own can miss a window post for kind of operational reasons, either because they're restarting their node or because um, like to apply an update or something along those lines, or there's just congestion and they don't end up getting um, their window post message through the, the mempool in time. Um, and so occasionally this happens and is uh, very painful right now to miss a single window post for a miner. And we want to uh, minimize that to just what is needed from like a, a security and crypto econ perspective to make sure that the incentives are correct to have good data storage without overly penalizing um, you know, honest miners that are doing their best. Um, and so uh, recommend that people take a look at this. Um, the, the main difference is uh, instead of immediately um, deducting a penalty for newly faulted sectors um, to just remove power, mark the sector as faulty and skip the penalty for now. And then um, if that, that, uh, that sector stays faulty for until the next proving period, then it would get faulted um, into the future. Um, and so kind of deferring some of those penalties for people who, you know, you can miss it once and you're okay. Um, but if you keep missing it, um, then it ratchets back up to exactly, exactly the same level of penalty, um, you know, in aggregate over time if you keep missing your window posts. Um, so we have a, an associated implementation in spec actors that folks can take a look at. Um, and we're actually planning to get this into today's upgrade. So uh, not, not a good representation in terms of how lightning fast uh, we will, most FIPS will be, because they'll probably be much, much more uh, invasive. But we intentionally chose one that was relatively easy to implement. And um, we, we think it will make make everyone happy um, across the board but curious if there's any oops, um, any questions or other things related to FIP02 general nudge for everyone to also think of things they would like to improve and write them up as FIPs. Um, I just have a quick question I, I was looking at the uh, the pull request for the spec actors for this um, what, what was the original rationale to to incur a fee after you recovered a sector? I am not on the research team. And um, That's I don't cool. think I I'm the best person to answer this else. question. Yeah. yeah. I think there is, <laughs> there are very strong research analyses against all of this. Um, <laughs> but I think prob that would be either a fine thing to post as a comment uh, or a question, there is a associated issue here for discussion. And so um, hmm. if you if you want to post a question here, I think that'd be a good place for, you know, even though it's not whether or not we should do FIP02, it's a um, more context on the design rhetoric. What, what was the question? Sorry, I missed it. Um, on, the, uh, on the PR for the spec actors change for FIPS2, um, it noted that <clears throat> one of the uh, things in this PR is to remove the fee incurred when a sector is successfully recovered. Um, and I was just wondering why they, that was implemented in the first place, where after a sector is recovered that there's a fee incurred. Right, yeah. Uh, I have some... Uh some explanation, but I don't know if it's the best one. So probably the crypto econ people are the best ones. Uh, it's got to do with um, miners declaring a fault because they get to know if they've got a faulty sector. Uh, a miner that has a faulty sector knows it first and therefore they can declare it first. And then when it's recovered, um, things would mess up with the reward. But uh, yeah, I don't have the full explanation, sorry. Cool, yeah, that's not an issue. I can ping somebody. Thank you. 
yeah, ZX is probably the, the person with the fullest knowledge, but anyone on the Spec Actors team probably. Uh, yeah, that was, pretty... that was the first person that came to mind. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, and I see that there's also already other FIPS getting, getting drafted in the works, um, which is awesome. Um, so if you, have, if you have more, feel free to, feel free to add them. Cool. Well, that was the last of today's agenda, I believe. Um, theory, spec, FIPS, updates, welcoming IPFS force. Um, anyone else have anything useful to chat about? No? Cool. Well, then maybe we'll call it early this week. And um, yeah, if my my suggestion for moving these meetings going forward is to move them to 4 p.m. UTC on Thursdays, um, which I believe is 9 a.m. PT and like 11 p.m. in Beijing time. Um, it's not great, but better than better than you know 1 a.m. on a, uh, a Saturday. Thumbs up. All right, we'll aim for it then. We'll reschedule future meetings. Cool. Awesome. In that case, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of, well, probably the rest of the week is short, but wonderful weekend. And um, see you all in a little under two weeks. Cool. See you. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Cheers, folks. <laughs>